The Queen's decision to veto Charles' plan amid his marital crisis with Diana has been revealed by a royal expert. Prince Charles' split with Diana had attracted intense public attention, and, as best-selling royal author Anthony Holden explains in his book Charles, a biography, the prince attempted to devise a plan to distract from the media's eye. The plan hatched on the eve of Queen Elizabeth II's 40th anniversary accession to the throne, with Charles not wanting to detract his mother's landmark event. To get around any potential difficulties, Charles advised his mum to commission a neoclassical fountain in Parliament Square to honour her time as monarch. Much to his dismay, the Queen vetoed the idea, something Mr Holden says was decisively forward-thinking of the throne considering the issues the royal family was facing at the time. Mr Holden said, amid the deaths of a recession with hard-pressed births taxpayers processing about subsiding the world's wealthiest woman, the Queen herself was quick to veto her loving son's idea. It proved a sound judgment on the monarch's part, as her personal milestone that February was obscured by the visible deterioration of Charles's marriage during a disastrous six-day visit to India. The Queen's decision to reject Charles' fountain idea was further proved to be of sound judgment when royal fans across the world saw pictures of a lone Diana in India. Mr Holden described the scene of melancholy as being a turning point in Charles and Diana's marital descent. He wrote, Beside the Taj Mahal, built by a 17th-century Mughal emperor for his wife, who had died at childbirth, the Prince of Wales posed poignantly alone, sending a deliberate postcard home, bearing the clear message that she now saw herself as an abandoned woman. Despite a long-standing public promise to take his bride to the Taj Mahal, made during his bachelor days, the prince had opted to remind behind in Delhi. The instance of Charles and Diana displaying a public mini-feud was not uncommon in the late 1990s. Many have highlighted Diana's attempts of breaking free of the shackles of royal life while at the same time still wanting to maintain a relationship with Charles whose life was very much entrenched in royal protocol. In a telling interview with Panorama journalist, Martin Bashir, Diane admitted the heartbreaking reason why she didn't divorce Prince Charles. When asked about vital information regarding her relationship with Charles and her expectations of married life, she said, I think like any marriage, especially when you've had divorced parents like myself, you'd want to try even harder to make it work and you don't want to fall back into a pattern that you've seen happen in your own family. I desperately wanted it to work. I desperately loved my husband and I wanted to share everything together, and I thought that we were a very good team. The reality that transpired is harsh and heartbreaking, one that Diana had hardly ever imagined. Her close friend and personal trainer, Jenny Rivet, claims Diana had no plans of divorcing Charles despite their often troubled marriage. Ms. Rivet claims that although Diana asked for a trial period of separation from Charles, it was, in fact, Queen Elizabeth who advised that the pair divorce. Charles and Diana announced their separation in 1992, though the divorce process was to take four years. It has been reported that the pair were less than amicable after the divorce, and had no relationship at all. The relationship was further strained following the divorce when in the same Panorama interview, Diana admitted that she didn't think Charles would suit the suffocating role of king. In the spring of 1997, just one year after the divorce, Diana arranged for to be the subject of a professional photoshoot of the renowned photographer, Mario Testino. Many who saw the photos commented on a more carefree and happy Diana, one that hadn't been seen in public for a long time. The photoshoot marked the beginning of a new chapter for Diana, as she carved a new identity for herself.